this video is going to talk about a common assay that is done um, in uh, cell biology, looking at cells to see if they're undergoing apoptosis. So if you recall, apoptosis is a programmed cell death. Um, cells are getting a signal that something is wrong inside, and they self-destruct. So this is a very common assay done when studying cancer cells, trying to reestablish their ability to undergo apoptosis is a key mechanism by which many cancer drugs work. If you can inhibit the pro-growth pathways, it's possible you can trigger the pro-death pathways. So in these types of assays, um, researchers are asking, are these cells undergoing apoptosis when usually treated with some sort of drug um, or knocking out some sort of gene? There are many different types of apoptosis assays, and this video is going to talk about the Annexin-5 perpidium iodine assay, which is a very common, very um, uh, sensitive assay for apoptosis. So there are two, here are two plates of cells, a plate on the left, a plate on the right. And let's say the, the plate on the right is uh, treated with some sort of drug, and the researchers want to know, does this drug cause uh, apoptosis of these cancer cells? So how are they going to examine this? Well, um, they're going to uh, expose the cells to a compound known as annexin-5, and I've abbreviated that A, Roman numeral 5. And so what you need to know about annexin-5 is annexin-5 binds a molecule called phosphatidylserine. And if you look in this little cartoon here, phosphatidylserine is indicated by um, the black squares. What is phosphatidylserine? It is a serine residue that has been modified by a lipid and this molecule, and you don't really have to worry about what its normal function is in the cell, but it lives in the plasma membrane, and it's pointed uh, toward the interior, toward the cytoplasm. So it's uh, tethered to the plasma membrane using the phosphatidyl group, um, and uh, points in toward the cytoplasm. Now, annexin-5 would bind phosphatidylserine if it could get to it, but if you look at um, the phosphatidylserine, it's on the pointing toward the inside of the cell, an X and 5, uh, represented by the, the star and the thing that grabs onto a square, it's outside the cell. So if cells are alive, phosphatidylserine is normally pointed toward the inside, and X and 5 cannot bind it, and therefore, um, if a cell is not binding an X and 5, it is not undergoing apoptosis. It turns out when apoptosis occurs, the uh, phosphatidylserine switches polarity, which means it flops from the inside of the plasma membrane to the outside of the plasma membrane. And now you can see these uh, little black boxes. Why does it do this? Excellent question. Um, during apoptosis, there are changes in the membrane integrity. And this is just one of the things that happens. The membrane starts to get all wobbly and things start to move back and forth because the cell is about to self-destruct. So it turns out phosphatidylserine switches polarity, and now it can be found pointing to the outside of the cell. And if that is true, then an X and 5 can bind to it and stick to these cells. And so if a cell uh, is covered in an X and 5, therefore um, the researchers can conclude that it is actually most likely undergoing apoptosis. This is a very early step in apoptosis. Um, and so you can see an X and 5 uh, decorating some of those cells in that dish treated with drug. That tells researchers that some percentage of those cells are now undergoing apoptosis. Um, in a later step of apoptosis, something else occurs, and that involves um, this other molecule that we add to the cells called propidium iodine. What's propidium iodine? It is a molecule that binds, it intercalates into DNA, and it glows. And if you, um, if you look here in the cartoon, propidium iodine is this red circle. Now, if this propidium iodine binds to the cells, um, binds to the DNA, that means it can get inside the cells. But propidium iodine can't get through the plasma membrane. So if the cell's alive, propidium iodine doesn't get into the cells, doesn't stick to the DNA. And so we would call living cells, healthy cells, um, propidium iodine negative, or they wouldn't bind propidium iodide because propidium iodine can't access the DNA in the nucleus. In um, a late steps of apoptosis, the membranes start to fall apart in the cell plasma membrane, the nuclear membrane. In that, if that's the case, propidium iodine can therefore enter the cell and bind strongly to the DNA. And so um, detecting propidium iodine binding to cells is an indicator of a late stage of apoptosis. So that means the cells are really on their way uh, through the apoptosis uh, um, process and they are um, very late in that process. So 
researchers use annexin-5 and propionium iodine to detect uh, the state of apoptosis in cells. So if, here's a plate of cells, and they expose the cells to annexin-5 and propionium iodine, and neither of them uh, associates with the cells, then those cells are said to be alive. If just annexin-5 associates with the cells, binds to the phosphatidylserine on the outside, then it is said that these cells are undergoing apoptosis, and it's the early stage of apoptosis. If both molecules, annexin-5 and propionium iodine, associate with the cells, then it's said that they are undergoing a late um, apoptosis uh, stage. So they have gone through early and then now are in late. Is it possible that propionium iodine could um, associate with the cells, but annexin-5 not? And actually, it can. And um, this typically happens during necrosis. Now, necrosis is another type of cell death, but it usually is due to... Um, physical injury. And so let's say that cell here, you know, there's a physical uh, insult to it and its membrane is, uh, integrity is, is ruptured that way. So this is not a um, controlled program uh, destruction from the inside, it is a physical injury for, from the outside. If that happens, propinium iodine actually can get into that cell. And so propinium iodine is associated with it and it's called an X and it's called propinium iodine positive, but the phosphatidylserine has not flipped to the outside. So it's actually an actin-5 negative. So if a uh, cell binds propionium iodine but does not bind an actin-5, it's actually considered most likely to undergo a necrotic death. And scientists are very interested in knowing whether their cells dying by necrosis or apoptosis. Apoptosis is a much more regulated pathway. So in scientific literature, uh, we commonly see these uh, data sets when performing an annexin-5 for pretium iodine assay. So what is this data set? Uh, this data set usually um, involves taking a plate of cells and then isolating the cells <clears throat> and shooting, uh, after uh, exposing the cells to annexin-5 and pretium iodine, you mix the cells, annexin-5 and pretium iodine all together, and then you shoot lasers at each one of these cells. And what you measure are the um, signals that come off of the annexin-5 um, because the annexin-5 is conjugated to a glowing molecule typically called FITC. And so if there's annexin-5 in the cells, the cells will glow a certain wavelength of light. If there's propinium iodine associating with the cells, the laser will um, excite the propinium iodine and it will emit a different wavelength of night light. So um, what you're looking at in these uh, graphs are intensities of wavelengths of light that are coming off the cells. On the x-axis, it's usually it's the intensity of the annexin-5 uh, molecule bound to FITC. So, for example, in this panel here on the left, this region of the axis, there's very low levels of annexin-5 uh, detected. Each one of those tiny dots, and you can see below the graph, it says number of cells counted, 3,316. Each one of those dots represents a cell and it's placed on the x-axis based on its intensity of an X and 5. So everything in this um, lower quadrant, or uh, lower half of the x-axis, has a low, relatively low, an X and 5 signal. And those cells are most likely not conjugated or associated with an X and 5 at a very high level. Whereas these cells in this quadrant, anywhere from 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 4, that is a quite intense signal of an X and 5. So we would call the cells that are located here in Nexin-5 positive. They're strongly binding in Nexin-5, shoot lasers at these cells, and they glow brightly with this FITC uh, um, emission. On the y-axis, you typically have the propidium iodine intensity. So, again, cells found on the lower part of the y-axis, here showing 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 2 about, uh, that is a very low intensity signal for propidium iodine. So these cells have not uh, incorporated propidium iodine into their DNA, um, and so we would call them propidium iodine negative. Up here, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4 uh, signal intensity, these cells have taken up propidium iodine and are glowing brightly. So we call these cells propidium iodine positive. So if you look at this um, graph, there are really these four quadrants. Um, this first quadrant here, the lower left, we call those cells the annexin 5 negative propidium iodine negative cells. And those cells we know are the alive cells. So in this plate of cells that say negative control, and you can count the number of cells and uh, give the percentage. 89.99% of the cells are annexin-5 negative, propidium negative, and we could say are, in fact, alive. 
the cells in this quadrant are in um, an actin 5 positive, because they have high signals of an actin 5, but propitiomyodine negative. Um, so we would call these cells um, early apoptotic cells. So they have started to undergo apoptosis. Some cells up here, which are both an actin 5 positive and propitiomyodine positive, those cells are undergoing late stages of apoptosis. So if you total up these two quadrants, the you get about, oh, um, a little over 8% of the cells in this dish are undergoing apoptosis. And that's not, a, that's not an abnormal thing. If you grow cells in a dish, some cells are going to be healthy. Some cells are maybe going to uh, not, you know, be so happy in that dish. And they might just trigger apoptosis maybe due to lack of nutrients or lack of space or something. The cells in this quadrant, 1 point something 6, those are necrotic cells. So they must have um, been damaged during the manipulation process getting them out of the um, dish, shooting lasers at them. So uh, these cells have propitiomyodine inside them, but don't really have an actin 5 uh, binding to them, so we call them necrotic. And that's typically a very small percentage. So if you're, let's say, treating cells with a drug, and the positive control here is treating um, cells with something that induces apoptosis, you can now see that um, out of 3,000 cells, only 55% of them are... Uh, Nexin 5 negative, propitiomyodine negative. So those numbers have gone down from 89% to 55%. Whereas if you look at the quadrants that uh, are indicating the apoptotic cells, those have gone up significantly. So we went from an 8% uh, total apoptosis to um, that is over 40% apoptotic cells. So this is a common assay that is done. There are many other apoptotic assays, but this will be one that we will see um, over and over. So you should understand the function of an exon 5 and propitiomyodine, what they bind, when they bind them, and the readout of these apoptotic assays in terms of uh, which quadrant represents um, what levels of an exon 5 and propitiomyodine and how that relates to the cell's state alive or apoptotic or necrotic.